It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. This won't get too long. Good day. Welcome to Great White Retro. I'm Gord Fessick. This is my cat, Toes. <laughs> Our topic today is this big box full of some Radio Shack technology. This is my first Septandy video where I'll try to unbox and evaluate what I think is a TRS-80 Model 1. The side says uh, catalog number 1056, level 2, RAM 16K. Well, we'll see what's in here very shortly. Let's get her done. Collection of floppy disks. I'm assuming these are all for the Model 1. Single-sided disks, so not double-sided. This package came from a generous donor up in Gresham, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for this. We're going to get a proper chance to look at this in a bit. It came with two power supplies. Hmm. Earphones, battery slash AC cassette recorder, more floppies. Uh, of course, what good are floppy disks? Not a floppy drive. Oh boy. Ah, this would be it. This Model 1 is missing something though. This does indeed look like a Model 1. This is the cassette port. I'm assuming these are extras. I think the Model 1 had this piece that goes with it. Unlike a lot of computers, this entire kit came with a tape drive and a monitor. Now, for the CRT segments, I generally do noise reduction anyway, so you shouldn't hear any high-pitched whine if you're sensitive. But if you do hear that, let me know, please. Well, here's the question. Do I dare plug this thing in? I do get a separate power strip for this. And there's the Model 1. That Model 1 has three identical connectors there. It was looking like I'm missing a rather important piece of equipment. There's supposed to be an expansion module that also acts as a monitor stand. This ribbon cable was supposed to connect to that expansion module because I don't see any other way of hooking up this floppy drive except with that module. Well, no floppy drive this time. But I was surprised that Radio Shack sold an entire kit like this, monitor included. I've not really dealt with Tandy kit before, so this is the first time! And watch those connectors on the back, they're identical. Okay, so these are the only things that are going to work for me here. No smoke, that's a good sign. Oh, we've got a picture. That's encouraging. All right, let's try this. Hey, we got a, we got a picture. No. Oh, we are in Radio Shack Basic. Let's see. The character set is busted, but I suspect that's bad video RAM. I'll attempt to explain some troubleshooting later on. Oh, 
Okay, well, the basic interpreter works. The problem only seems to be with the video RAM. This might be savable. If I could type a simple program in basic blind and have it run, that suggests to me that the firmware is fine, that the basic interpreter is fine, and at least the base RAM is fine. We've got a problem with the video RAM. This monitor is in remarkable shape. That picture tube is doing a nice clear picture. If I can figure out an adapter to plug it into a different computer, I might try it out with uh, the Apple IIc that I've got or maybe the Commodore 128's monochrome mode. That is actually pretty encouraging. Hello, Star. I need my box back. Star, I need the box back. Come on, Star. Thank you. Okay, a little bit of feeling interruption later. I brought home a cable from 8-Bit Classics while I was over at VCF Midwest. This should allow me to use this model one with any generic composite monitor, including this Dell flat panel. We can get a good close look at our video RAM problem here, and I'm trying to determine which bits are at fault. There are seven chips representing seven bits of video RAM. They're 2102s. I figure I might make the attempt of swapping some of those around just to see if I can narrow the problem down. Remarkably, this machine has been repaired at least once before. There's a second seal on there. Taking this thing apart requires removing six screws. They are in pairs of different lengths, depending on how far up or back of the case they are, which actually isn't too bad. It's pretty hard to get them confused. The longer screws go to the back and you can figure out the rest. After that, the top cover appears to just come off. There we go. No snaps in this one, but there are these rubber standoffs I need to make sure I don't lose. There we go. So sometime in 1982, this computer had some service. Glenn, if you're watching this, hey, let me know. <laughs> okay. Now that keyboard is actually soldered onto the motherboard with that ribbon cable there, so I cannot separate these out yet. If there's a way for me to put a, a connectable ribbon cable in there, I might make that attempt later. But first, I just want to see if I can poke the video RAM some, see if I can get it to behave differently. So I lay this out, and I'm trying to be careful because all three of those connectors are identical. There's that big uh, power transistor that Adrian Black was dealing with. It deals with power regulation. If the connection is not solid, that little transistor off to the left there will take the brunt of the abuse. And there are the seven static video RAM chips, 2102As according to this. Looks like one of them was replaced already and another one was socketed. So I'm not sure what went on with the previous repair. Did it fail? Did another RAM fail, maybe? Who knows? I'm just trying to be careful there. I want to read that label to make sure I plug the power connector into the power plug. And there's the power. Video is in the middle and cassettes off to the right. But here's where things got nasty. I don't know what happened. Just the act of me taking this out of its case and stretching that cable caused this. Just the act of taking it out of its case caused that. I really don't have the time right now to do any extended troubleshooting, plus my Hantech scope is missing. So I'm going to have to put this back together for now for later troubleshooting. But I tried my second power supply just to make sure it wasn't the power supply doing it and the behavior was identical. Oh dear. Looks like we got more ghost busting to do. Not exactly the best start to my first Septandi video ever. 
Unfortunately, I've got way too much to do this fall and a lot of other systems to get through. But uh, I've ordered some parts for this guy and I am reading some additional troubleshooting assistance to learn how to fix this guy. Fortunately, I can use a modern monitor. I don't have to use that uh, CRT. With any luck, we'll be able to continue troubleshooting this in a future episode. Until then, good day.